online, on digital, and on 88 to 91 FM. BBC Radio 2. Going up with Alan Carr, yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, I'm Alan Carr. Oh no, and she's Melanie. You promised me that you wouldn't. Sorry, I don't know what it is. Just before we start, I get the nerve. nerve. You're listening to Going Out with Alan Carr and and Melanie Melanie Sykes. Sykes. Yes, there you go. Club Tropicana by Wham. And we want uh, George Michael to get well soon. Yeah, get well, George. I mean, severe pneumonia. I know, poor Mm. thing. Now, listen, people must think that us two are in hysterics the moment we come into the (laughs) building. But what happens? We have a normal talk, me and Mel. (laughs) Oh, I'm doing a big shop. Yeah, I'm in the curry tonight. Yeah, and then by... (laughs) 6.03, 6.03, I start seeing Melanie shaking and a mascara <laughs> running. And I'm like, what's going to happen? And it just comes out. It's nerves, it's, isn't I it? I think it's a bit of nerves and just, just get giddy about doing the show, darling. It's always exciting. It's always that. I, I've admitted you, I get nervous. Just that th- little that opening bit. That first bit, yeah. It don't matter how many times it, you do it, yeah. it still feels a little bit, yeah, And to be honest, it is only our names yeah, and the name of the show. It's not that challenging, really. No, but it terrifies me. <laughs> I sometimes wonder I might get the wrong name like Jimmy Carr you know <laughs> or Eric Sykes for me yeah, oh I yes, do it yeah. one way yeah. Yeah. yeah but we're here we're, we're through the, the worst of it we are um, let's hope so for our listeners well, there's no Welsh names popping up <laughs> <Yeah>. later <laughs> Now, what we're talking about... Oh, yeah, do you see that picture of that woman? She got stuck in, in a... Yeah, that clothes horse, or yeah. clothes maiden, as I call them. Clothes maiden? Yeah, well, I call it a clothes maiden, if you never heard Why of Why do you call it a maiden? It's know. like a horse with yeah. the legs. Well, Karen's sticking her thumbs up to say, yes, it's a maiden, and Car- Karen's from up north, so maybe it's a northern thing, mm. the clothes maiden. Clothes... I've never heard it, that clothes maiden. Mm. Well, you can see with a horse, because it's got, like, legs like a horse. Well, it hasn't... It doesn't look anything like a horse, if we're getting very, sort of, specific. Well, it don't look like a maiden, does it? Well, I don't, <laughs> no, but I don't it, see it with a ruff and a, <laughs> and a bodice. Depends what you're hanging on yours. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, I bet it's a maiden round your house. We'll see it in the power. <laughs> So, yes, yeah, so, um, actually, we saw the YouTube thing, didn't we? And actually it was... Um, well, it, it looked was, a bit disturbing. Yeah she, yeah. she really is trapped in the middle of this yeah. thing. And, and it's concertina as well. So it's yeah, it just looks quite harrowing, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. And it's a proper one because you can get the rubbish uh, clothes horse, can't you? You know, it's just two. Because I bought one recently and I wish I hadn't got it. Right. Because I wanted, like, you know, those full-on ones yeah. which are really tall because yeah. I've got lots of clothes. Yeah. But it was actually just one of the two little bits. Yeah, they're... they're just good enough for tea towels and socks. Tea and socks and underwear, yeah. That's just not good, is it? And it had a, um, funny legs because I put it out in my yard and when the wind blows, it blows it over so they're all dirty <laughs> on the floor. Does a maiden do that? Or is it just maiden does. It's exactly the same problem. Oh, right. Yeah, just don't don't be doing it in winter anyway, because you know if you put your clothes out in winter, they just freeze. They don't actually dry. You really? notice that? Well, I'm worried Everything's about my you know, tumble dryer though. My tumble dryer's always on. It's going to cost a fortune. Oh gosh, yeah, that sucks energy. Like there's no tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you're on an economy drive, are you? Putting <laughs> the washing out. Yeah, like at night I put it on me economy seven, and then um, and I put me. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> Save the pet. What's it's, it? Look after the pennies and the pounds look after uh, themselves. It's nice to know that you're fruit. We all can't Very afford good. a maiden. <laughs> 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 and um, also, so we'll know, what did you get stuck in? Yeah. Have you ever been stuck in? I don't think I've been stuck in an appliance as such. I've been stuck in some cowboy boots. Oh, yes. yeah. Would well, you remember me saying when I took that flight to yeah. LA and it was back in the day when everybody was rocking the old boots and I couldn't get them off at the other end. I had to sleep in them until my feet sort of like, you know, diminished in size. <laughs> diminished in size. <laughs> I think got less swollen was maybe maybe what you're looking for there. (laughs) Thanks, thanks, diminished in size. And were they expensive as well? They were. They're from a very famous uh, cowboy boot shop, which I can't say because it's actually a naughty word when you say it. But oh, it, right, you know, okay, it was, yeah. It's, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, beautiful they were, mm. uh, but not very comfortable to sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got, you know, I got stuck in some skinny fit jeans once. Did you? Yeah, and they were in the shop. Oh, no, you were trying them on. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. So, and what size feet are you just out of interest? I'm size ten. So that's big, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. And a tiny little hole. Yeah. 
What are you talking well, about? You, you, your ankle hole for the trousers. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's right. So you, yes. Did you get your heels stuck? Yeah, and then because I've got thunder thighs, and it sort of got wedged <laughs> over, and then I, I could, I had to pay for them in the end because I had to cut them, rip them. No. Mm. Oh no. So I've been stuck not in an appliance like you, but then I, I've been stuck in a, a disabled toilet before, where the handle came off on the inside. Oh no. And Pete, I was banging, but people weren't coming to help me. There's usually a cord, though, isn't there, in a disabled... And what were you doing in there? Anyway, you're not supposed to use them. Oh, yes, that's right. You're not supposed to use them, Alan. Oh, no! It's like crime watch! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, there'll be police waiting for me at (laughs) 8 o'clock! No, I, I was desperate. Oh, yeah, no, that, there was no, no one waiting outside. It's <laughs> all right. We've all done it. Oh, I was desperate. I've oh. actually gone in the men's. If I'm desperate enough, I'll just go no. in the men's me. Yeah, I'm not bothered. In fact, was it was it when I came to see you at the Apollo? Yeah. I was, there was a queue at the ladies, so I just went in the men's. I just don't give them monkeys. Well, I can't believe, you know, I've been in women's toilets. Yeah. They're so lovely, aren't they? They've got potpourri, chandeliers, yeah, magazines all, to flick all, through. Yeah, <laughs> Men's are minging. Men's are horrible. I yeah. sometimes think of like dressing up as a woman just to go and use the women's toilets. <laughs> <laughs> I they might are. take your clothes, mate, and say it's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the clothes on it. <laughs> you old me handbag. <laughs> So, yeah, so uh, what we're talking about. What yeah, talking what, what about? have you been stuck in? Yeah. And also, the funnier, the better as well. Like, if it's something really weird. Or, like, you know, when, when uh, domestic appliances attack, that's yeah. what we want to yeah. know. Yeah, getting stuck in buckets and things like that. And we're, all t- we're talking about sleep as well, aren't yes, we? Yes, yes. You know, some people um, can actually function on very limited sleep, can't yeah, they? Like, I can't, I can't. Margaret Thatcher's the prime example of that. Yeah, she yeah, could do a four-hour yeah. sleep and be completely fine to yeah. ruin everybody's lives. <laughs> You know oh, <laughs> right on. <laughs> Mel, I've never... I didn't know you were some political op potato. <laughs> Should we shout in scab, scab next? <laughs> we shall not be moved. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so there, so there. Yeah. So how are you with sleep? Um, I have to have me full eight hours me, or I, I mean, I can't even like talk pop, unless I've had like an urn of tea. Do you know what I mean? Just to get really? me out. See, yeah. I'm good in the morning. I'm always, I always bounce out of bed. I don't have a problem mm. getting up, but I do need eight hours. Yeah. It's like as I'm getting older, lost. I'm starting to have more nana naps. You Are know, you? like when you wake up during, through countdown and you've got like all <laughs> triple down your face and you've tipped your tea on your lap where you've just, that's what I need. I need a nana nap. I had a, I had a nap this afternoon, actually, to mm. be fair. Yeah. I had about half hour. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's I like those half hour ones because you're full of beans. Yeah, aren't you? yeah, they're good. They're really good. Right. Well, let we've been wittering on. <laughs> You've all probably gone to sleep <laughs> right now. <laughs> if you have got insomnia, tuning into this show will really help you out. Uh, call us now. Oh five hundred two eighty eight to ninety one. Calls are free from a BT landline. Other networks may vary, and calls from mobiles may cost more. You can text us on eighty eight to ninety one. Texts will be charged at your standard network rate. You can email us at alan.car at bbc.co.uk. And, of course, everyone who appears on air will get a going out of Alan Carr. Rosette! <laughs> oh, Ooh, that was, was that actually on the song, yeah, or was I it didn't... like a dodgy <laughs> CD? <laughs> what do you take me for Pixie Lot there? <sighs> you know, you mentioned me using a disabled toilet. I was terrified then. The producer came in, and I thought it was You're the You're going to get in trouble. <laughs> I really did. You'll be all, you're all right as long as you don't do it again. No, no, but there wasn't anyone like in a wheelchair around. Yeah, so, so you find you know that you're yeah, safe to just quickly nip in and out. Yeah, yeah, but Except it wasn't you got locked. Well, the yeah, yeah, fell off. yeah, it's not good, is no. it? No. May that be a lesson to yes, you. Sorry, I, I've let everyone down. <laughs> and I apologise to you, Mel, Radio Two, and all our listeners. <laughs> Um, Emma's been in touch. I got my head stuck in the railings outside Buckingham Palace when I was about nine. Oh, my dad was not sympathetic or helpful. Oh, Emma. That Ouch. happened to a boy at school and the, um, the um, what do you call it, fire services, yeah, they yeah. came and they used butter round the neck. Really? Just greased him up with a bit of lard or butter or something and he just slipped out. Oh. But it, before that, we just laughed and laughed oh. and laughed. Can you imagine how embarrassing that yeah, looks? yeah. <gasps> no. Now, we're talking about the clothes maiden and it says, Hi, Alan and Mel, a clothes maiden question mark. Oh, no, it's a winter dyke. And that is, um, it's a Scottish word. 
A winter dyke. A winter dyke. Oh, okay. And Ant and Matt in Glasgow say it's a winter dyke and that they're loving the show and uh, we're making their weekend. So I've never heard that before. No, I haven't. No. no um, uh, Kath, Kath Bent's been in touch. She's from the North East originally and called them a clothes horse. Right. However, I've been living in the North West for a few years now, St Helens, and it's called a maiden here. There you are. So she gets confused. Well, if you go up north... It'll be a winter dike. A if winter you move. dike, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's something new every day. <laughs> now, Paul, the chef in Taunton, says, please don't fret about your feet, Alan. I have to find size 15 to 16, depending on the make. So if you ever want to feel better about your feet, come stand next to me. Oh, it's quite large, isn't it? 15. 15 slash 16. Well, because there are shops like High and Mighty, isn't there, for like for the larger gentlemen? Is yes. there Long Tall Sally? Yeah, there's a Long Tall Because you're tall, you have to go yeah. to Long Tall I Sally. I used to go to Long Tall Sally um, because my leg length is quite long, but I'm not particularly tall, it's just uh, leg you've length. You've got really long legs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so yeah, they get, you know, special. So when you got your gym slips, you know, when you were doing the cross-country <laughs> They running. were like belts, basically. <laughs> But I had the knickers on, so it didn't matter. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> they were. <laughs> of course. They weren't on your clothes, maiden. I'll be waiting to die. <laughs> <laughs> um, also coming up on the show, um, you've got the telly quiz and uh, you can be the envy of your friends because you could win a Going Out with Alan Carr rosette. <laughs> Full terms and conditions for the quiz are available on our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash radio 2. So if you want to have a give us a ring, uh, if you want to play that, 0500 28 to 91, take part. If your singing is usually greeted with derision, then face your fears by letting the whole world laugh at you. Join me on karaoke at the end of the show. And if you're approaching retirement age and your other half still says you're not going out dressed like that, then give us a ring for, for your wardrobe disasters. And remember, um, if there's a song you really want to party to, text us your favourite party tunes now on 88 to 91. And of course, text will be charged at your standard network rate. Just let us know what you're up to, what you're doing, want to know your sleeping stories and what have you got stuck in. <laughs> Let us know. Just sounds so silly. To say. <laughs> I know. Well, let's honestly. There's loads. Yeah, isn't there? yeah, brilliant. You know, Bring got, it on. I got stuck in an uh, industrial skip once. Okay, how did that happen? Well, I was. This is another. You know, now everything's health and safety. Yeah. Well, I used to um, sweep up in a factory that made CDs. You know, like the little things that make CDs. They're just like little plastic cubes which get compressed. Are they? And I had to sweep them all up and put them in this bin and then I couldn't lift the bin because I'd filled them too much into the skip. Yeah. So I asked the man on the forklift truck and then as I pushed the uh, <laughs> the bin in, I actually didn't let go of the bin <laughs> and fell into the bin, <laughs> an industrial skip, and I couldn't oh. get out. <laughs> Obviously, health and safety nightmare. How long were you stuck in there? About half hour. Oh, no, that's terrible. I know, I know. <laughs> But I was stuck in an industrial skip. So if anyone else has been industrial, let us know. They're the kind of stories we want to hear. Yeah, that's what we want to know, yeah. Bring oh, it on. 0500 to 91. Give us a ring. With the UK and this... And before that trail, it was substitute by Liquid Gold. We've got a caller. Hello, Jane. Hi, Alan. Hi, Mel. Hi, it's darling. You, again, Jane. you know we... who I am, don't you? Oh, hello, Jane. Hello. I'm the lady that sent you the Manchester United stuff. Oh, hello again. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. I've just made six curries and a pudding for tomorrow night's dinner, so I'm S tired now. Six curries? Yeah, we've got friends coming to dinner tomorrow night, Sue and Peter, so I've been cooking all afternoon. So you've done lots of different curries, how nice. Yeah. You're spoiling them. Pardon? You're spoiling them. I know, I like to have a variety. Good for you. That's what that's what they, they do, isn't it? You, you know, you don't have just like a big old curry. No, you yeah. don't have one, you have lots, lots and then you just put a little bit of each on your plate. Very nice. Do you nice. do it properly? Do you have like the, uh, is it the banana leaves and you eat with your fingers? <laughs> No, I just have a knife and fork. <laughs> oh, Jane. <laughs> I know, I'm letting the side down there. You are, I? really. <laughs> but have you been stuck in anything? No, but honestly, my husband has. I have never laughed <laughs> so much in all my life. We were in a castle in Somerset, and I don't know whether, I mean, Mel may know we're having children. You can go and there's like a corner and you put the medieval clothes on and... You know, you can try things on and... Oh, walk. yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And my husband, <laughs> so funny, <laughs> he put the, um, you know, like a suit of armour, but the helmet with the side bits. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the front bit over your nose. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, it got stuck. Oh! It was terrible, honestly. 
And the more he tried to pull it off, <laughs> the bigger it was swelling. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. And the children are saying, Daddy, Daddy, leave it on. It's so funny. And he's going, my head's swelling. it, And we couldn't get it off. It was terrible. No, because the more stressed and hot and sweaty you get, the worse it gets, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, but it didn't help because it was nearly four hours and I was just absolutely... <laughs> four <terrible>. hours? <laughs> yeah, but we're in the middle of a castle with, the, with tourists walking it was terrible no, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen it did go a funny colour at one point but I just carried on laughing I've never I, I thought I was going to have to go in hospital my tummy was so sore <laughs> because we ended up you know like you know the story where you pull a turnip can you remember that oh the enormous turnip yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah, and yes. then the, the cat started pulling and the and dog then the pulled ma- the oh, cat. Oh, and then the maid. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. The maid, got not the maiden, but the maid the got maid. in on it. Yeah. Yes. And then the villagers did and the baker, the butcher. I remember that. Oh, my yeah. God. It was like that. Anyway, we popped him out of it. Oh, but he had sore ears, honestly. <laughs> So what did the tourists think of this? There's like a man <laughs> stuck in a... part of the entertainment. <laughs> I bet they did. Your poor oh, husband. God, I mean, it scabbled all his ears. It was terrible. So has he got like a pathological fear of armour now? Well, no, he's a policeman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they don't but, wear armour yeah. these days. Pardon? They don't wear armour. No, but they wear helmets. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, now. right, yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> No, oh. he's a massive head, though, as my husband. I mean, I couldn't deliver my children because they've got big heads like him, you know. <laughs> OK, Jane, now it's sort of getting into um, <laughs> too much information, Jane. Um... <laughs> no, but honestly, his head was terrible. And, I mean, he has a really big helmet. It's enormous. Yeah. Oh, dear, I bet. I bet. Anyway. <laughs> well, anyway. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Was that the noise he was making? Um, <laughs> ja- Jane, yeah. we'll speak to you again, I'm oh, sure. Jane, Thanks for have ringing. a lovely night and enjoy your curries tomorrow, Jane. Okay, bye, 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 Jane. Bye, bye. Oh, oh dear. Uh, shall I just read these quick texts? Tony from Devon, I managed to get my finger stuck in a Dr Pepper bottle. I panicked thinking I'd have to go to hospital, but luckily it came out. That's what happens. If you do panic, it just makes things worse, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. all the blood rushes to it. And, and you it's know, just and like... you're like, hell, I'm going to be stuck like this forever. <laughs> But four hours in an, you know, no. in a, t- in a, what's it called, armor, yeah, armor. suit of armour. No way. <laughs> Horrible. Right then, yeah, keep the calls coming. 0500 288 to 91 is a bit of vintage Prince. I want to be your lover. We're talking about uh, things you get stuck in and when um, household appliances attack. <laughs> and um, do you have a shredder at your house? Yes. Have you ever got anything caught in a shredder? No, but I've made the mistakes. You know, when you've got things stapled together and you forget to take the staples off, gosh, it makes one hell of a noise. When <laughs> you're like, oh, it's not happy yeah, with that. Yeah, no, but um, no. with the kids around, you have to be so careful with shredders. Well, mine's got, mine's an idiot proof <laughs> one. Mine's got like a tie with a red, have you got that and a red cross through it? Just so you don't get a tie. Because people must get their ties caught in shredders. Oh, God, Do you reckon yeah, that happens? Oh, I'm sure it's happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definite hazard. Definite. Um, my husband got his head stuck down the back of a sofa whilst doing a <laughs> headstand to entertain the children on holiday. <laughs> to spend, he had to spend the rest of the holiday in a surgical collar. <gasps> oh, gosh. I mean, I've heard a loose change stuck down the back, but never a head. <laughs> no. Oh, dear. Lorna in St Albans says, Hi, Ellen Amel. My brother got stuck in a cat flap when he was a toddler because he was trying to follow the cat. It was hilarious. <laughs> so cute. Um, I shut the neck cords of my hoodie in the washing machine, thought I was going to be on my knees for the 56-minute quick wash. <gasps> oh, gosh. That's weird, isn't it? That could have been really dangerous. Yeah. Wow. Um, hi, Eleanor Mel. Uh, once got stuck in the wing of an Airbus 320. I was part of the manufacturer team at the time and I've been very claustrophobic ever since. Have a good show, Craig and Henley on 10. What? That could have been... Yeah, I mean, he was, yeah, he was obviously having a tinker around in it. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the technical yeah. term for Don't it? Don't blind me with science, <laughs> Melanie Sykes. Just having a tinker. <laughs> um, give us a ring, 0500 to We do need some tele quizzes. That's 0500 28 to 91. Now, don't be put off because the man last, wasn't it, last was week, it last a 10 week? out of 10. Yes, was that last week? Yeah, yeah it was really yeah. impressive, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so come on and text us 88 to 91 and you can email us at alan.car at bbc.co.uk. Without you, without you. <laughs>
<laughs> I sounded like him then, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, it's amazing. Wow. <laughs> Less patronising, please. <laughs> Without you, David Greta featuring Usher. And we're also talking about sleep. Now, um... Yeah, we sort of want to know, you know, if you can't sleep, what do you sort of do to get yourself back to sleep? Or oh, what yeah. you do when, you know, you just can't sleep? Do you do jigsaws or what? You know, yeah, we want to know yeah. about that, don't we? Yeah, yeah. And... But sometimes, you know, are you before you realise, because everyone realises now, don't they, about what you put in your body and how... But when I was growing up, I used to have a nice cup of tea and then wonder why I never could get back to sleep. Oh, yeah. You don't have caffeine. Uh, no one told us, did they, that caffeine would make you go do lovely tea? Yeah, or like, you're having cheese late at night, supposed to keep you up, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But how do you do? How do you get back to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> I usually read. Read. I'll put the light on because there's no point tossing and turning, is there? Because that'll just drive you nuts. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> so, what I'll do is I'll probably turn the light on and have a read. And reading but always You're not meant to, to turn the light on because your brain thinks, oh, sunset. Do no, you, oh, is it sun no. up? What's the one? What's the opposite? Sun, <laughs> sun dawn, dawn, sunrise, <laughs> sun, oh, sunrise. <laughs> oh, Alan, what? I'm glad to be of help. A sunrise, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, it works for me because the minute you start getting into a book, then you start nodding off. So that counting works for sheep me. don't help. Have no. you ever counted sheep? No, I it's can't so do that. boring. So boring. But it's beyond boring. You don't even go to sleep. You're like, what am I doing here? <laughs> then you start thinking, my life is rubbish. Yeah. No, I, I, I've not had that many sleepless light nights lately. Although my kids are waking up a lot in the night at the moment, and they're seven and nine, so really they should be past that. Yeah, but yeah. honestly, they just keep like running in my room and saying bizarre things. Like Tino said to me the other day, Supershead's just said boo, one of his teddy bears, which yeah. freaked me out because was he sleepwalking? Well, he's he sort of he's half awake, half asleep. Oh. He's sort of he, and then the other day I, I woke up and he was standing in the room punching the air. Oh, yeah. It freaks you out. It's a horrible way to wake up with a child. Even well, it's yours, he looks possessed. Well, what about me? I went through um, a phase of sleepwalking and sleep talking. I went to the foot of my mum and dad's bed and just screamed. I mean, <laughs> my mum and dad were like, ah! Can you imagine that? <laughs> Awful. And also, I thought I heard someone in the backyard. I get, I'm going to my mum and dad's room. I go around my mum's side. I go, mum, mum. And then she opens her eyes and goes, ah! At me and punches me in the face. <laughs> she thought I was an intruder. Oh my god! I would have been safer with the man downstairs <laughs> trying to get in. My own mum punched me in the face. <gasps> oh my god! You must have terrified her. Honestly, though, I, I, it, it's scary in the middle of the night when your kids do that. And because there's something spooky about, I, I, I feel like there's something spooky going on in my hat no. at the moment. Anyway, yeah, because the lights are flickering and stuff. You found Ghostbusters? No, but I've got an electrician <laughs> coming round on Monday just to check, and if he can't get to the bottom of it, then I'm worried Why haven't an electrician round? Because the lights are flickering. Oh, right. Yeah. I it's thought it was like a part-time <laughs> exorcist. <laughs> might, I do a bit of like a satanic worship <laughs> on, the, uh, on the side. <laughs> No, it's funny goings on at my flat at the moment. Yeah, Not yeah. very happy about it, to be honest. Is there a mood when you go in there? Do you feel I'm like... I'm usually sensitive to these things. I've actually changed hotel rooms in the past because I've sent something in the room and I've I've literally checked into a different room. In fact, so I actually don't feel mm -hmm. anything. I will take my deck chair to another room. <laughs> but here yeah that, I'm not... i will be taking the mini bar with me <laughs> <laughs> oh, no i mean don't, don't get I, me I, I, honestly because it's been a topic of conversation recently because it, the kids are waking up a lot in the night and they're saying really weird things when they do and i'm starting to panic but i can't feel anything myself but sometimes no. they say that children and, and animals are much more sensitive than we are anyway oh. i can't get into it because i will no, not be able no, to sleep no, there no, on my no, own no no <laughs> doubt but we're talking about like if you're not scared you know yeah, I mean, just, yeah what yeah if you can't get to sleep not because you your house do? is haunted or yeah whatever. yeah what do you do but so? you know what you can wind yourself up can't you yeah your head just especially at that time of night as well your head goes yeah guess what i found out you wow. know the first thing that goes before you go to sleep your sense of proportion did you know that's the first thing no <laughs> in what regard oh, in, to the things <laughs> in your head um, <laughs> <laughs> what you no, I, I don't mean, know. Well, you know, like, when, <laughs> you have to explain it. You know, when you, you like, go to sleep and you start worrying about a oh, problem. Oh, I see. And then, like, in the morning, you wake up and you're like, everything's bigger. And you're like, wake up. You go, like, oh, what was that about? You know? <laughs> yes. Everything's back to normal. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. When you start taking your, um, <laughs> out the gutter. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. No. We've got a call. Hello, Linda. Hi there. Hi, Hello, Linda. love. Now, what have you got stuck in? I got stuck in a wheelie bin. <laughs> oh, Linda, have a day off. How would you get stuck in a wheelie bin? I, I got out of my car and I, I was throwing some rubbish into a bin and I dropped the car keys into the bin and oh. I was trying to get it out in the, the, the bottom of the bin and I just tipped over <laughs> and I fell head first into the bin. Oh, no. And your then feet. I had to wriggle, about, I had to oh. wriggle about until it fell over and then oh. it rolled down a hill and I was trying to get out the bin and it finally had bounced off a lamppost and I was, I was able to crawl out and all the children in the street were in hysterics oh. chasing this wheelie bin down the hill as it was rolling were on. Your, were your legs poking out the top? <laughs> and my legs were sticking out the top, exactly, yeah. Oh, it's a shame no one filmed it. You could have won 250 quid on You've Been Framed. Oh, I, I just, you know, when I, I overbalanced, I knew I was going. You know, oh, I thought, oh, yes. my God, and then I just went, woof, right into the bin, and I just couldn't stop myself. <laughs> it must have been terrifying, Linda. Well, apart from that, it didn't smell any pleasant either, you oh, know. I bet it was awful. I oh. bet it was in slow motion, wasn't it, as well? Did you feel like it was yeah, just taking an eternity? And I kept thinking, oh, I've nearly got the keys, I've nearly got the keys, and then, woof, that was me right in. Oh, Linda. <laughs> Um, oh, did you, you get the right bin? Because you know you have to have a different bin for recycling plastics. And I don't know. Is Maybe there one I'm for Linda McGregor? I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Linda, I'm going to pop a rosette in the post for you, my love. Thank you very much. You Thank stay clear you. of those wheelie bins, all right? <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Oh, oh dear, that's brilliant. That's I can see that happening, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, Helen from Hinkley says, I got stuck in some knee-length boots in a shot when the zip came undone from the bottom but was still done up at the top. The shot was the size of a phone box and I've no idea how the staff didn't notice. My partner on his hands and knees grappling with the zip. We were both in a right state, managed it in the end and fled. Fab show. And that's Helen. I talk in my sleep. I said to my husband one night, give us a kiss, George. And his name is John. Oh, no. I also told him Paul Newman was coming for tea. Love the show from Kay in Bucks. Yeah, I sleep. Uh, my my friend, my friend sleep? Catherine, I went travelling around the world with her yeah. when we were students. She had the worst sleep talking. And we're in, we're in this like little uh, cabana in Mexico. Yeah. And, you know, there is like spiders, lizards, everything. Well, she just sits up in bed, looks at me. She's asleep with these piercing eyes. Oh. And goes, there's a giant spider on your leg like this. Well, I was like Sunita <laughs> and I'm a celebrity. <laughs> All in her sleep. All in her oh. sleep. They freak you out because their eyes are otherworldly, oh, aren't they? Yeah, that is not good. So did you wake her by screaming? No, you're not meant to wake them, is it? It's like no, dangerous. No, yeah, it's supposed to be. So did she just... And it, there's that, that's a bit of a myth, isn't it, as well? If you, you know, when you fall, you sleep and you're falling in your dream. In you're your dream, dreaming yeah. and you're falling. If you hit the floor, you're meant to die, isn't it? Yeah, but everything about d dying in dreams means rebirth. Everything's the opposite. Oh, is it? What yeah. kind of one where you're naked in a shopping centre? That, is, that, is that insecurity? Oh, must stop drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I have those dreams when my teeth it? fall out. Oh, I, I go, woohoo, I'm I... pleased. I want a new pair. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> anyway, oh, that's God. just me. Oh, 528 to 91. Give us a call. Oh, this is a really oh, good a classic. joke. Lovely. Classic. I'm so happy this is on. Samantha Fox, touch me. I want your body. <laughs> oh, dear. Touch me, I want your bodies. It's a bit repetitive, isn't it? Oh, I like I think it's a classic. I do. <laughs> I think it's up there with Purple Rain, that. <laughs> Um, uh, Leslie in Glasgow has been in touch. Please play any song for my sister Susan, who has been grumpy all day because she's tired. She loves your show and would stop me slapping her. So there you go, Leslie. I've played <laughs> Touch Me by Samantha Fox. Oh, that you're too kind. <laughs> Um, hi, Mel and Alan. I've been stood up tonight by my boyfriend, boyfriend no. who I was really looking forward to seeing. So I'm now spending the night with you both and you're making my night. Thank you for a fabulous show. And that's Tracy. I can't believe she's been stood up by a boyfriend. That's unforgivable what, at this late. St st stood up or dumped? 
stopped. What's the difference? Stood up. He's obviously just not made other up. arrangements tonight, and it's a bit late to be telling it's your Saturday girlfriend. Night. Yeah, you cannot be doing yeah. that. Hey, don't let him get away with that, Tracy. Oliver in Norwich, I, Ellen Mel, I got stuck in a disabled toilet as well, and I did pull the cord to get out, and they had to break the door down, and I had to walk out to a crowd of people who saw that I wasn't disabled. Oh. I was mortified. That serves you right, Oliver. Yeah, shame of it. Exactly the same thing. <laughs> we could share a cell when the police come to pick us up. Hi, Ellen Mel, please could you thank my wonderful parents, Moira and Paul Dunnicky, who have spent the day cleaning my new house and assembling flat pack furniture. They're giggling at your show and would love a mention. Thanks, Matt. Stephen Somerset says it's so hard to change gear with your hand stuck in a Pringles tube. <laughs> They are dangerous. They are, actually, yes. Yeah, I'm yes. surprised they, people don't go down to A&E. Yeah, that. yeah, I bet that's quite a common occurrence, mm. I would have thought. Because <laughs> they're quite deep, aren't they, really? They are. You the ones at the, ones at the bottom, bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. I've got some more getting stuck stories here. My nan got stuck in a beanbag in Woolworths in Wood Green in the 1970s. It's... <laughs> I'm sure she makes it sound still, like. like she's still there. <laughs> <laughs> it took the two girls from the record counter, a manager and a woman who was doing a shopping to pull her out, and that's Sarah in London. Stuck in a beanbag. In a beanbag. How'd hard. you get inside a beanbag? Well, they're out of... They're hard to get out of, aren't they, beanbags, to be fair? Oh, she went like, actually she went inside in it. with she the stuffing. All the, no, she went with the <laughs> stuffing. No, she just... Well, got, serves her right. It just obviously just completely collapsed yeah, around her. Yeah, they she, are hard to yeah, get out. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there's it's a like lot of It's like sometimes you've been on a bouncy castle. Yeah, I know yeah. you're not meant to it at our, at our age, age. But, yeah, you get stuck in the corner. It is murder. <laughs> You have to ask, like, a child to pull you up. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> Help me, please. I can honestly say that hasn't happened to me, actually. Oh, well, <laughs> happened to me. Uh, hello, Graham. Hello, Alan. Hello, Hi, Mel. Gra- Hi there. How are you doing? I'm all right, yeah. Good, good stuff. So what have you got stuck in? I got stuck in a push bike, of all things. How come? <laughs> I'd better explain, hadn't I? Yes, yes. Um, that's a great. Yeah, basically, I was, I was on my way home from work on my push bike, and I was just coming up to a, a road crossing, and this little girl came flying past me on this little push bike. And I never took any notice, but then the next sort of half a second afterwards, a dog came round. He was going so fast, I didn't have time to do anything. I just sort of swerved, sort of, sort of hit the dog, but didn't hurt it. But then uh, I bashed into something else and fell over, and my leg got trapped between the handlebar and, and the pedal and I, I was trapped, I couldn't move Oh, Graham! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I didn't know what to do but uh, the, the little girl's mother came round the, the corner just afterwards and she explained that every day she lets uh, her daughter go off and then lets her dog off the lead from around the corner the dog chases her and Oh, so, so it's like a no, game! We'll be doing that again then, will you? <laughs> uh, so, um, anyway, uh, she managed to get me sort of uh, untrapped out of the bike. It took a, a little while. I was there for a few <laughs> minutes, panicking. You go, oh, I can't get out. I wasn't hurt. You know, I was, I was fine. Yeah. But, Just uh, a little bit humiliated, I, basically. I got off the bike. We finally got off. And uh, I looked at the bike and the, the wheel was all bent and everything. <laughs> and um, when I looked up, what I actually pressed into was a dog poo bin. <laughs> oh, oh, no! Yeah, and it all bent. But luckily, none of it came out. So oh, I was a God. little bit fortunate. But then... Uh... You don't mind having egg on your face, but... <laughs> 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 oh, dear. But uh, then, uh, of course, then I had to... Because I couldn't use the bike, that was all bent. I had to carry the bike home about half a mile. I was absolutely worn out. But uh, the nice lady did pay for a new wheel for my bike. So, well, really, it's yeah. the least she can do, letting her dog. And <laughs> I mean, that is quite a good way of exercising your pet, though, releasing your children <laughs> and letting the dog <laughs> chase, chase it. Kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> but, Graham, you live to tell the tale. Thank you, Graham. All right, then, bye. Thanks very Bye-bye. Much. Bye-bye now. His life was saved by... Uh, a dog pooping. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gillian Morkham says, Hi, Alan Amell. Safety alert. I once pushed my finger through the lid of a baby wipes tube. You, do you know what that's like? It's kind of um, puckered plastic. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And she's put the finger in, and when she's trying to get it out, it's just grabbed her finger, so she's got it stuck in there. And he oh. says, It was a good job my dad had some scissors in the car. It was very painful. I almost lost my finger. It went so blue. No. They are quite, when you think about that, it's quite, that is quite lethal, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I was a fat kid at school. I know I'm, like, painfully thin now, but um, <laughs> I remember getting my legs caught in, you know, those trolleys. 
when you put the kid in the little yes. seat thing. How yeah, old were you? About 16. <laughs> No, no. Your chubby little legs. I know, I know. Oh, and, and they your were like, couldn't wet. lift you out. No. Oh, sweet. I'd be cut out by a fireman. Stop it. That is a lie. Yeah, I thought that was taking a little bit too far. Just adding a little bit of spice <laughs> there to my story. Um, we need, uh, we need a telly quizzer. Um, yes. Yeah. Give us a ring. Oh five hundred twenty eight to ninety one. And let's have a bit of Rosemary Clooney. This old lad. <laughs> Make sure to keep your calls, mails and texts coming. We've got the telly quiz, we've got karaoke and all your party tunes. This is BBC Radio 2, online, on digital and on 88 to 91 FM. <laughs> oh, Danza Cuduro. Oh, that was good. By Lucenzo and Cuote. That was brilliant. It went against all my natural sort of instincts and senses i actually found myself enjoying that oh, oh i can see your hips yeah. going and then <laughs> a, a bit of the shoulder your year. right shoulder was yeah. shimmying <laughs> honestly loved it and um, we've had like a lot you know you're having um you, know, you think there's a presence in your app. yes i do yes i really there's there's all the signs are there well i've had two bits of advice come in i'm right. going to share them with you okay okay christine in Somerset, says, Hi, Alan and Mel, love the show. Mel, try giving your kids rescue remedy in their drinks before bed and burn bed and burn frankincense oil or sticks in their rooms before you go to bed to ward off unwanted otherworldly spirits. <gasps> oh and gosh. lavender pillows will aid a good night's sleep too. Hope this helps. Sweet dreams. That's great. I shall do all of the above. But Thank then you. Dr. Fat John's been in touch. Oh, no. Would What's Mel going? like me to pop round to see if I can feel anything? <laughs> <laughs> You feel oh. safer with the spirits. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, thanks, John. She'll take a no, chance. No, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Fat John. <laughs> Isn't it nice, though, that he is willing he's, to yeah, help? Yeah, he's willing to help, but I think I'd rather be possessed. <laughs> <laughs> John, come round and have a little feel. <laughs> uh, we're talking about things being stuck. Davy, the European trucker, the European trucker from Glasgow here. I got my truck stuck under a low bridge once and had to let the air out of the tyres to get out. An old lady asked if I was stuck. I said, "No, I'm delivering this bridge." <laughs> Oh, that's, oh, that's brilliant. funny. That nice one, brilliant. Dave. Um, hi, Eleanor. Mel. Whilst on holiday in Menorca, my brother and I decided to race our mum and dad in the lift whilst they took the stairs. They were jubilant as they thought they'd won until they realised we were stuck in the lift between floors. Oh. We had to prise the door open and squeeze ourselves out. And that's from Natalie and Robert Collier in Oxford. That happened, that happened to my nanny top. Did she, it? She, nanny, she, what? She, nanny Tot. Nanny Tot. What's that short for? No, that's what everyone because he's so big. My granddad used to oh. call him Tot. Oh, he's actually Granddad Car, but we called him uh, Granddad Tot, Nanny oh. Tot. Oh, but she'd been in Sweet. hospital because she was ill, and then um, oh. the, the lift got stuck, and then between the floors. Oh, see, it's your worst and nightmare. It, I know, and then you can imagine just seeing your nanny's head, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, help, I'm stuck. <laughs> Like that, it was horrible. Oh, oh, really awful. Yeah, but this nice man helped her down. I'm sure, I think oh, she quite enjoyed it. <laughs> he had his perks, did it? Hey, you know, speaking of lift, you know what? I got stuck. Have you ever this happened done to you? What? I got my lace caught in the old um, escalator thing. No. Yeah, it was like being at the gym on a treadmill. <gasps> you're running. I mean, it weren't like, I didn't go on forever. It was just, it just like quite rem- scary. It yeah, just you- reminds me of that old advert. Do you remember that old advert for the escalators and that little girl has a rag doll? Do you remember that? It might be before that <gasps> oh, time and yeah. it gets stuck in the teeth at the bottom of the thing and it shreds this rag doll. That's not a nice well, advert. But, you know, it's like saying just be careful when you go use an escalator and, and the doll's obviously a symbol for a, that would be you. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> but it's a rag doll. A little doll. cabbage patch doll. <laughs> That's wedged at the Do you foot of an escalator. It? No, no, it's, yeah, it's but then that, that's put that's put in the that that's frightening. It's, kids, it was quite frightening. You only get like a little bit of your soul <laughs> chipped off. You don't like die, do you? No one's ever been no, shredded, shredded at the foot of yeah. an escalator. <laughs> I mean, there must be kids that going, ah, when they go to an Arndale. I, I'm still nervous. I'm actually nervous going in escalators. Do you not have a little bit of apprehension just before you step on? And I don't have great balance anyway, just in life, generally. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as 
was a mum that I really have to find my feet. I have to hold on to the side. I can't just stand, like, you know, Oh, free. you're joking. I swear to God, I've got a proper That's issue That's for children that side, to say, hold on tight. <laughs> no, it's honestly, actually... So I'm not bothered about lifts. I know people get Do quite Do you jump phobic. when you get to the top yes, of the escalator? Yes, yes. Oh, no. Yeah, it's pathetic. It's, it's like I just resort to being a kid. Terrifying. Terrifying. Coming down is worse, doing the stepping on to get. Yeah. And when I've got the kids with me, I'll just, I'm in pieces. <laughs> it's the simple it's not, things. You, you're talking like it's like a ride on Alton Towers, <laughs> like you get a photo at the bottom. <laughs> Well, I don't do that. I never do that. I went on the Big Dipper once in Blackpool. And oh, the I, big one. I prayed, literally prayed, mm. and I'm not that religious, but I prayed all the way around. And when I looked yeah. at the photograph, I literally had my eyes <laughs> <laughs> completely in the bit, prayer oh, position. Oh, Mel, religious <laughs> to the end. <laughs> I was terrified. Oh, well, it's terrifying. I'm not doing... It? I never do those things, and that was just a joke. It just nearly finished me off. Well, you know that they've got that ride now for Saw. You've seen those Saw movies? Well, I can't even no. stand them. No, I mean, I, I only watched half of one. It's like, oh, and then I, the I can't man do... talks like this. No. Do you like games? That's how he talks. And then you go on a ride, and there's a man going, have you put your seatbelt on? <laughs> it's terrifying. No, not for me. Not for me. Well, it's, it's not like the sound from your house, though. You don't hear no, someone going, not hello, her. Melanie. No, we not Get on voices. my escalator of death. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you jump at the end. No, but I just keep hearing things fall. Or, no. Um, I swear to you, in the kids' room as well, they've got these double double doors at the top of the wardrobe and it's bust open and something's fallen out and things like that. Oh, Honestly, no, it's that's becoming horrible, quite frequent. Oh, no, no, that's horrible. But I'm trying to play it down with the kids because I don't want them stressing about it. Oh, no, don't. That's horrible music. Do you know what? Shall I come round to stay? I think you need a real man there. <laughs> Do you think you could manage uh, it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd kick it with my size 10 feet. <laughs> All right, you come then. Oh, really? Okay. You come then. over. Okay, then. Yeah. We're top to tail. Stop, the, in... stop that stop music. That don't is... like it, because it's actually making me go goose pimply. Yeah, like yeah. It. Don't like it. Okay, well... <laughs> What have we waited on for the last 15 I, I've minutes? I've no idea. Anyway, <laughs> we've still got karaoke. We'll have to listen to it on iPlayer in the week, see what yeah, we were talking the, about. Sometimes, Crikey. you know, after two hours, it's just, <laughs> what the hell have I spoken about? <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, the tele quiz line is uh, they're now closed. We've got our tele quizzes. We still need a karaoke. Um, you can give us a ring on 0500 288 91. Calls are free from a BT landline. Other networks may vary, and calls from mobiles may cost more. You can text us on 88 to 91. Text will be charged at your standard network rate, and you can email us alan.car at bbc.co.uk. It's Alan's tele quiz. That's right, it's my telequiz! And we have our first caller, Jill. Hello, Alan. Hi, Hello, Jill. love. Hello, Alan. I'm here with loads of girls. Oh, my favourite. <laughs> I'll move away from them a little bit so that you can hear me. Oh, so what are you doing with all these girls? Well, we're up in a house in the Lake District. I have spoken to you before. It was the haunted house. I don't know whether you remember or not. Oh. Yeah, and this time we're here for Nicolette's 40th birthday. So there's 11 of us. Yeah. Including some children this time. Oh. And we're just getting ready. I've been straightening hair. We're all on the drinks now, apart from the children. Of course. <laughs> I'm glad to hear we're it. We're going to the pub for a meal, so we thought we'd give you a call. Oh, lovely. So we can get on. And I'm going on this telequiz. Good God. Well, you've got plenty of help there, haven't you? I have. But... Are they intelligent, Jill? <laughs> Woo! Jill, are they intelligent? Do they look intelligent? Do they look intelligent? One or two of them look intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> they don't sound it. <laughs> Not all of them. <laughs> All right, Jill, are you ready to play? I'm ready to play. Right, you've got a minute and a half to answer ten questions. Here oh we go. Oh, my goodness, right. Question number one. You're once, twice, three times, three times a lady. Which soul sensation is the subject of a BBC4 tribute this week? Is it Lionel Richard? It is. Well Get done. Number two, the ultimate guide to penny pinching is on this week. But what length does Alan stoop to keep his money safe? What, what, sorry? What lengths does Alan stoop to keep his money safe? Penny, I've no idea. Pass. Pass. No, I it? have a pocket stitched in me knickers. Oh, you do? <laughs> I do. My goodness. No one ever goes there. <laughs> Number three, new reality show Desperate Scouse Wives is set in which city? Liverpool. Yes. Southland. Number four. In Little England, expats Fiona and Nicole have opened a gite in France. 
For a point, can you give your impression of a French person? Ooh, la la, je vais rien. Beautiful. <laughs> Maybe a French person who'd been on the sauce, yeah. but um, yes, that's fine. <laughs> right, Hot Like Us on BBC Three follows the fortunes of couples who fancy themselves as models. For a point, which body parts from me and Alan would you combine to form the perfect supermodel? Oh, for goodness sake, it's got to definitely be Alan's gorgeous mouth. Oh, yes. Well and your fantastic hair, my love. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, yes, two points. Thank you. Right, number six, the TV remake of Charlie's Angels is on this week. For a point, can you name one of the actresses in the original sh uh, show? Yes, oh, correct. well done. Brilliant. Yeah. So, did you do okay? You did, you did. Five, Five, which oh, is good. really good. good. Yes, it is. Well, I have heard some people on the show and they're rubbish, aren't they? Yeah, they can oh. be, you that know. Was okay. No, that was pretty good. Oh, good, OK. If people <laughs> with one make the top of the leaderboard on this show. <laughs> <laughs> but five is very well oh, done, good. Jill. But well, you stay I, on I, the I, line. I the next contestant look, but I hope they don't win. Yeah, yeah, we're, That's you, very are nice playing of for you. A, you are playing for a rosette as well, so, oh, you know, yeah. it's all to play for. Oh, definitely. Right, we'll play a bit of Stevie Wonder. You stay on the line, OK, Jill? Do. Thank you. Thank you. Stevie Wonder, their part time lover. Now let's see who our next telequizzer is. Reveal yourself. Hello, Alan. It's John. How are you? Oh, hello, Hi, John. John. Hello. And oh, where are you phoning from? Northampton. Oh, a fellow Northamptonian. And how is the lovely Northampton? Uh, yeah, anyway, next. Uh, no, it's oh. fine, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, uh, is the uh, Boot and Shoe mu Museum still on? Still going? It is. It, it's still going. It's still going a fair lick. And if you go on the Northampton Borough Council website, they're always looking for shoes for next year. They're doing some 2012 promotion. And um. they, want, they want your shoes if you've been a teenager, if you've, been, if you, if you've got married, if you're from Poland. No, really. <laughs> they're crazy for shoes. Oh, well, it is a, a boot and shoe museum, John. Well, do you reckon I, I should I give mean, some of my shoes? You, you should do, yeah. Just, just you know, put, pop some odour eaters in before you put them in a jiffy bag. And now, I'm John, sure they would love to open them. You're getting personal, John. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you like watching on the telly, John? Oh, uh, you know, I would love to say I love Icelandic drama on uh, BBC Four with subtitles. <laughs> but do you know what my guilty pleasure is? <laughs> what? My guilty pleasure... I, I I record this morning, oh. and then I watch it when I get in from work. Do oh. you? Oh, I love it. I what do. do you love about it? Oh, it's oh, it's easy listening. It, um, <laughs> it's easy listening. <laughs> viewing. It's it is so easy, easy viewing. However, I barely make it to Gino's cooking section before I'm having a little nana nap. Oh, oh John, it happens to us all. <laughs> do you know what? I was on this morning of a day and I tasted Gino's lamb casserole. Is it, good? it was He is good, it isn't is it? So it is good. Because, you, you know, when you watch This Morning or any of these cooking shows and the man, like, they, they, they have a... You all say, mmm. Mm, yeah, lovely. And, yeah. Then, you know, the, something's dying behind their eyes. <laughs> Actually, it was delicious. I didn't even have to go, mmm, nah, no, it was mm, delicious. Good. Well, lovely. Oh, it's not the most fascinating <laughs> thing I've said, John, all evening, but I was just... Should we move on? Are you ready to play, John? <laughs> You've got a minute and a half to answer ten questions. Here we go. Question number one. I'm picking up the good vibrations. She's giving us great citations. There's a documentary on this week about Dennis Wilson, who was in which famous 60s pop group? Wilson Pickett. No, it's the Beach Boys. The Beach oh, Boys. I don't know. Number two. Shut up. What star of The Only Way Is Essex gets her own show this week? Oh, the Amy Child. Part. Yes. Number three. Nick orders Gail to stay out of his love life. Name the soap. Corey. Yeah. Yeah. How to build a satellite is about space equipment. For a point, can you do an impression of Alan being launched into space on the end of a rocket? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> John, you've actually thought about this. <laughs> I love it. Give him a point. All right, number five. So macho, he's gotta be so macho, he's gotta be big and strong. Who was chucked out of I'm a Celebrity last night? Sunita. Yep. It's a long way to go just for Sunita. It is really. <laughs> number six, Rip Off Britain is on this week for a point. Can you do an impression of Alan waxing his chest? Mm hmm. Five, four, three. <laughs> I'll have a countdown every time. <laughs> it's, a, it's a two in one impression. 
<laughs> All right, number seven. I will be using my little grisels. The detective Poirot, played by David Suchet, is from which country? Belgium. Correct, number eight. Big Ted, Little Ted, Jemima, Hamble, Humpty were the stars of which classic children's show? High school. Correct! Oh, you did very well. You've done seven, I think that was right. Yes. You got the first one wrong and then you've done brilliantly. Seven! And, uh, and seven. also, can we give Mel a round of applause? Because you, you're ever so good. You said David Suchet. Yeah. Cause I was expecting you to say David, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did some... know that one. No, I know. I it's did. only yes, place but... name. <laughs> <laughs> it's only where people live that she has problems. Well, seven, John, that is amazing. <laughs> is there anyone you'd like to thank? Um, not really. Well, obviously, the good people at this morning for their, for their concerted effort for making such a fantastic show. John, you're scaring <laughs> me. <laughs> Have you got any friends of your own? Or do you um, live your, do you live through Holly and Phil and Gino? I, I do live through Holly and Phil, I'm afraid. Yeah, just just um oh, people don't want to hear who I know. And um, it's all about me. Um yeah, so hello to anyone who knows me. Oh, John. John, well, listen, I've got, we'll have to meet up and go to the uh, Boot and Shoe Museum together because I think we'll, we'll have a, a great laugh. Oh, it's a date. <laughs> OK, I'll be there. <laughs> all right, John, thanks very much. Thank you. Oh, Jill. Jill. Oh, Jill. Absolutely gutted. Oh, babe. Oh, I think it was because of the boot and shoe conversation. Do you know what? He did get a, a few of them time. wrong, but because he was a Northamptonian, is I think. Is that what it is? Yeah. He's got loads going for him, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not I blind date, Jill. Crazy girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Jill, is there anyone you'd like to say? I'd uh, like to say a special hello to Nicolette, whose 40th birthday it is, to all the girls that are here, to my husband, Phil, and Everton have won today, he's over the moon. And to George and Gina who are listening and all our friends who are listening that we rang up to say we were going to be on the radio. And really a big thank you to you as well, Alan and Mel, for letting us on the show. Oh, oh. lovely, darling. Thank you hey, so thanks. much. Bye, Bye, bye. 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 bye Nicolette. Bye. Oh, so well, good. that was good. nice. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, we still need a karaoke. Come on, it doesn't matter if your voice is a bit rubbish. Um, it's actually really imperative that, that your voice is a bit rubbish, yeah. really, isn't it? Because I will drown you out with my singing <laughs> anyway. So just give us a ring, 0500 288 to Let's have a bit of ring my bell. <laughs> Love the show, never miss it. We got our friends staying with us for the weekend and now waiting for a Chinese takeaway to arrive. Please can we have Anita Ward ring my bell played as it is a great song to get in the Saturday mood. That's Lewis, Gavin and Leanne from Great Yarmouth. Uh, now, we talked about getting stuck, aren't we, in yeah. various things. Uh, Joe says, I got stuck in a dress once when trying it on in Bieber in the 1970s. I had to call the shop assistant. She was so rude. And she said, how on earth did someone your size even get, in it, get oh, it on? That's rude. It scarred me for life, but I'm a slick size 12 and I have been for the past 20 years, uh, now nearly 60. So perhaps she did me a favour. Love the show. Makes me laugh so much. So rude. It is. My friend got a long dress stuck in the escalator in Denver. <laughs> it ripped it off and she was left standing in her pants and winter coat. <laughs> Not a good luck. <laughs> David Aberdeen. What's that sort of a carry on? It film? is. <laughs> I've got another one here about a dress coming, um, uh, skirt coming off. When at uni, I was cycling through the campus and my long flowing skirt got caught in the chain of the bike, pulling it down to my ankles. I hopped off the bike and pulled my skirt back up and realised that it was completely stuck in the chain. I had two choices, either pull my skirt off and leave it with the bike and walk back home with just my knickers on, or try to cut myself free. And I chose to do the latter option and cut myself free with a big biro. <laughs> Can you imagine the oh, desperation like, of trying to do that? that Bear Grylls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. In the mid-1980s, my friend Oliver got his tall art school-style quiff stuck in the closing doors of a tube train. <laughs> It'd been reaching down at the time and had to stay in that strange position until the next stop. Andrew Wyatt. <laughs> That's brilliant. Funny as. Yes. Love it, love it, love it. Um, hi, Ellen and Mel. My husband Martin got locked in the loo in a Greek restaurant on Cos. I was outside and didn't notice that the patio was clearing of diners and the staff had locked up and gone home. Next thing I knew was his face peering through a tiny greasy window. He was livid. <laughs> love the show, Becky. On holiday at a water park, this is Cameron, I got stuck halfway down down a water slide the water stopped pushing me down and i was just sitting there trying my hardest <laughs> to shuffle the rest of the way to my surprise someone was 
sliding down behind me and he ended up pushing me down with his feet on my back. All the way down, he was shouting French words at me. I love your show. It makes me laugh every week. Keep up the good work. I wonder what French words. Croissant. (laughs) Pano (laughs) raisin. Dieppe. Linda Ward says, my son, who was in his 20s at the time, got his head stuck in the railings on the top of the Eiffel Tower. His brother and his wife just looked on in hysterics, never did find out how he extracted his head. Oh, Oh, well, uh, Luke's been in touch now. Yeah, yeah. I'll come and cuddle you at night. Oh, bless. No ghosties will harm you while I'm there. Luke in the escort van somewhere near Chesterfield. (laughs) <laughs> oh, bless you. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not really into strangers giving me cuddles in my own bed in my own home. <laughs> but thanks. Ah, oh, well, if you do, he's somewhere near Chesterfield. I'm a bit worried about why it's so vague. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you could turn up at any moment. Oh, it's quite worrying, isn't it? <laughs> no, that's nice, Lou. But I, Thank sometimes you. Sometimes I get scared, yeah, Lou, oh, from yeah. my house. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so he's somewhere near John and Groats now. He's somewhere <laughs> the other way. <laughs> Oh, he's emigrated. Oh, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Donna's been in touch. <laughs> She'd like to hear Shania Twain, man, I feel like a woman. She's got Bailey's over ice in a hot bath with Alan and Melanie playing a great song, Bliss. Lovely. Thank guys. Here you go. But Shania Twain, man, I feel like a woman. <laughs> Alan, I got stuck in the revolving doors at a, a, a store, a department store. I was on one side and my shopping bags were on the other. <laughs> I couldn't get out as the doors kept revolving and got jammed. Security had to get me out. The shame, <laughs> Gareth. You see, you know you have a fear of escalators. Yeah. I have that with revolving doors, I do. It depends how small they are, yeah, but um, you know the ones where you're only like one person at a time? They really freak me out. And what about those ones at the airport that instantly stop as soon as you touch them? The amount uh, of times I've had about that and then they've got brain damaged. <laughs> if like, someone's trolley touches them, they yeah, stop, don't they? Yeah, which, and for that second, you just panic it's not going to open again, don't you? Yeah, it does, yeah. but yeah, just, yeah. Don't like them. No. Don't like them at all. Hi, both. I took my mum out one day years ago to Lyme Regis, and when we stopped for lunch, I popped downstairs to the loo once we'd ordered. I got locked in and no one else came in. An hour later, I emerged sobbing to find my mum sat opposite my cold meal, her plate empty, drumming her nails on the table, and she looked at me and she sniffed and she said, I thought you'd gone off with some man. Love the show, <laughs> Jane Ann in Swanmore. What a thing for your mum to assume. There's obviously a lot more to that story. Oh, yes. I, I think Jane like a Ann's a bit of a one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Next one. week, find out what happens <laughs> when her mum confronts her. <laughs> <laughs> do you reckon, let's start our own soap up. Yeah, I think should we do that, Mark? <laughs> should we have like um, like five minutes? We'll have like like the archers, like a character. Yeah, we'll play different characters. Yeah, yeah. We could be set in a little Welsh village. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be a good bar. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> I'll have that lingo down pat. <laughs> I could be a highwayman that moves to oh, a Welsh don't. village. Now you've got me excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, d- oh, maybe, I wonder if David Gandhi could be like... Uh, oh. Don't, please don't. That David Gandhi as a highwayman is just, uh, just a fantasy, a serious fantasy. I'm all hot under the collar now. Uh, all right, OK. Yeah, can he be in it? Well, maybe, maybe he might help you with your... Um, what? the, the, what's going on in your bedroom? <laughs> Things that go bump in the night. <laughs> oh, I would love that even. <laughs> Ghost? What ghost? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, don't. Dear Alan, oh. you've actually gone I, up honestly, and Honestly, I it. don't, because honestly, the thought of him drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, Alan and Mel, when I lived in a rather small <laughs> studio flat some years ago, I had a smart green and blue tartan sofa, which I'd convert into my bed every night. One morning, after a particularly heavy night night out drinking, I woke to find myself stuck inside the internal mechanism of Metal <laughs> Robin Springs. <laughs> Fortunately, after about half an hour struggling, I managed to extricate myself. Best wishes, Andrew. Half an hour inside a bed. Yeah, that's scary times, isn't it? That wow. is like, isn't it? That's <clears throat> like that film Seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sore, isn't it? It's like, that's what happens. It you is. like games? You have to get out of this bed before it collapses. I don't know what I'm talking about. Why oh, I'm getting quite hoarse. 
We've got Margaret on the phone. Hello, Margaret. Hiya, Helen. Hiya, Hiya Margaret. Margaret. Are you now, fine? Oh, yeah, yeah good. good. Fantastic show again. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. Oh, we're, we're in <laughs> unison. We're like Richard and Judy here. <laughs> now, listen, Margaret, you went to the coronation, didn't you? Yes. And you got stuck? Yes. What Tell happened? us where you got stuck. Um, well, all the children were let to go near the front of the palace where railings were. And uh, all the crowd were pushing and I was very excited. And I got my head stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I was wearing national health glasses at the moment, and uh, my ears were a little bit sticky out to start with. Aww. And uh, I was shouting my granddad, <laughs> get me out. And, well, I'll not tell you what he said about putting me at it railings. <laughs> and uh, him and this chap had to get my glasses off and whittle my head about and manage to get it out. Thankfully. Oh, God, how long were you stuck for? Uh, well, it's them like ages, but it'd probably be about five minutes or more. <laughs> oh, bless you. Margaret, I mean, they're sticking out ears and then they're sticking out ears. I <laughs> yeah, mean, how big are your ears that they can get wedged between two railings? <laughs> no, not that much. It was... Um, because in my head, I've pictured you looking like a wing nut. <laughs> <laughs> Glasses that was a bit thick, you know, these natural elves. Oh, yeah, they're quite thick, aren't they? Yeah, they were at my time of life. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know that's the second uh, call or text we've had about Buckingham Palace railings, though? Somebody else during the the show was had their head stuck there as well. Maybe they're the particularly narrow Well, you know something. what? People are nosy, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. They're getting a real good look. They want yeah. to look through the, the Queen's the neck curtains. The ne- yeah. <laughs> well, I was so excited at seeing Queen and there was I can always remember a guardsman stood nearby and he never flinched and I can still remember thinking, oh, I wonder what he's thinking and everybody's trying to get my head out of <laughs> Yeah, because they're not allowed to. No. They're not allowed to do anything. But it, no. it is funny when in those parades they yeah. do wink at you, though. How do you know? Because they've winked at me. You know, some of them guys who are on the horses and stuff. They oh. do it when there's when there's a cute woman around. Melanie. They, they, they they keep really still, but they'll just wink at you, and it's really exciting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Margaret, has any of them winked back. at you? Uh, no, no, I'll have to go back. <laughs> hey, Margaret, we'll go back together see if we can get a wink out of them. Oh, you I love will. That. <laughs> I like the way Melanie's um, shopping everyone today. I got told off for using a disabled <laughs> toilet, and then she's saying that all the Queen's guards are actually winking and uh, not doing the their bear, job properly. You know the bearskins, or whatever yeah. you call it. I yeah. swear, them guys, they, they do, they wink at you. Oh, well, was you, you running past in your gym <laughs> slip again? <laughs> oh, Margaret, it's absolutely lovely talking to you. Oh, it's been lovely talking to you. I'll oh, pop a rosette thanks, in the post Margaret. for you. Oh, thank you. You can put it on the side of your glasses. <laughs> Have a lovely night, love. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, I like Mark. She's lovely, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> right, let's have a Rotary Connection featuring Minnie Ripperton. I'm the Black Gold of the Sun. What? what? Before we do karaoke, I'll just do a few... Sh- We're absolutely inundated, aren't we? So let's yes. I'll just do a few, because people have very kindly sent them in. Um, hi, Eleanor. I absolutely love the show. My husband and I can't stop laughing with you both. Could you please say hello to my husband, Will? He's pottering in his shed and tell him, 831. Thank you, Shirley. Ooh. <laughs> it is. Dear Alan Amell, simply loving every minute of the show. Please say hi to my wonderful husband, Frank, as we travel home after a fab day out at Skeggy. Love to you both from Sandy Mills. Hi there. You two are brilliant. A bit mad. And Mel's laugh is a dirty laugh. <laughs> and infectious. <laughs> Just like to say, I'm on duty, sat in the middle of Salisbury Plain, watching the bunnies, laughing at you two. I reckon you should both stay on till I finish my duty at six in the morning. Aww. Nobby Clark. And hi, Alan. Can you please say get well soon to my partner, Jason, and let him know that I love him loads, and that's from Emma. Right, hello, Stephanie. Hello. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Now, are you a good singer, Stephanie? Oh, I'm the worst singer ever. Uh, Stephanie, who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> you are not the worst singer well, in the world. Well, wait and see, shall we? All right. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Should we have like a croak off? Yeah. <laughs> now, um, so you've chosen Steps Tragedy. Are you a Steps fan? I'm a bit of a big Steps fan. I'm. 28, and I admit that I'm a big Steps fan. I'm a big Steps fan. You know all the dance routines? Yeah. 
Yeah, me too. Especially this one, Tragedy by Steps. Oh. I'm a bit worried. I might get carried away and I might start doing the dance routine and you won't be able to hear me sing. Well, I'll be definitely doing it. I'm going to do the dance routine. Are you wearing a wedding dress like they did in the video? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> that is a bit worrying. Right, OK, cue the music. Woo! Stephanie, I'm doing the dance routine. You? I'm doing it. I'm ready. Right. In a lost and lonely part of town Held in time, in a world of tears, I slowly drown. Oh, you're good, Stephanie. <laughs> Going home, I just can't make it all along. I really should be holding you, holding you, loving you, loving you. Tragedy, go do it. When the rain is gone and you can't go on, it's tragedy. Morning cries and you don't know why it's hard to bear With no one to love you, you're going nowhere We can have a breather now, Stephanie Oh, can we do the dance? Oh, no, we can't And the feeling's gone and you can't go on, it's tragedy Morning cries and you don't know why it's hard to bear With no one to love you, you're going nowhere Oh, this is where we can have the breather. You've got to do your fake guitar. Oh, yeah, I'm doing all that. Do I like the way you're doing that. Dun, dun, dun. You're actually doing, like, the instrumental bits. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, this is a bit okay, awkward, this Stephanie. little space <laughs> here. <laughs> what are you doing later, Stephanie? This is a bit Nobody awkward. Nobody wants to come with me in April if you want to come. Oh, where are you seeing them? In Bournemouth. But you live in Aberdeen. No, no, I live in Winchester. Oh, you just come up to Aberdeen to sing with me. Oh, now lay burning, burning down, down inside of me. Of me. Burning love, the yearning that won't let me be. Down I go, I just can't take it all alone. I really should be holding you. That was amazing. Woo! And we actually sang it like the lyrics said. Yeah, we did, yeah, we did not bad, actually. No, a tragedy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, have a lovely weekend. Thank you. I'm Thank you. having Christmas dinner with my family, so thank you so much. We had the best afternoon ever. Love you lots. Oh, love you too. Love to your family. Love to my family, Elizabeth. Love me, Daddy, Nana, Grace. Um, oh, bye. Bye. <laughs> Going out with Alan Carr is an open mic production. This is BBC Radio 2, online, on digital, and on 88 to 91 FM. See you next week. Bye. BBC News at 8 o'clock.